Hi, uh, this is a um, introduction to network analysis, social network analysis in Python. Um, I'm going to focus, this is going to be really brief, I'm going to focus on network X. It's worth noting that the other popular and really wonderful um, library for doing network analysis is called iGraph. Um, I would say, you know, just a really quick summary from someone who um, I've actually used iGraph more. I think it's a little more powerful for making visualizations and modifying visualizations. Um, but uh, I think NetworkX is also great and is maybe a little easier to, you know, get into. And so I'm going to show kind of really, really brief introduction to sort of two things, um, how to import data uh, and then how to uh, and how to create and visualize network statistics and the networks themselves. So um, I'm uh, first going to load up. Oh yeah, let me uh, clear the output. I'm going to load up the libraries we're going to use. Uh, we'll use NetworkX, Py, uh, Matplotlib, Pandas, and, and NumPy just a little bit. Um, so the first thing is the the idea of a a um, network, a graph object. And so um, Network X works with these graph objects. And so the first thing you want to do is create a graph object. Um, one way of doing that is creating random graphs. There are a number of algorithms that they provide which create random graphs. This is one is the Barabashi Albert graph. Um, the basic idea of it, I, I really just using it as an example, uh, but the basic idea of it is that um, nodes uh, preferentially attach to other nodes based on how popular they already are. Um, to give, I guess to, I should step back for a second and give sort of a higher level, um, quick higher level explanation of what network analysis is. Uh, network analysis is um, the idea of trying to study and understand the relationships between entities. So instead of just studying entities, you know, like people I, um, or um, users or animals or neurons, that it's that in order to understand a system, it's often really helpful, in fact, vital to understand as much as we can about the relationships between those entities as well. Um, and so uh, network analysis um, includes a number of both methodological and theoretical tools for understanding, um, for trying to gain understanding through examining those relationships. Um, and so uh, this, yeah, so, and then and network X and, and some of these, give like easy and quick ways to get access to some of the statistics and um, and measures and visualizations that graph theorists have uh, developed over the, the past few decades. So the, the main idea of Network X is we need to create a graph object. Uh, it's, we're gonna call it G uh, throughout the tutorial. Um, this is this one is based on you know a, a random graph uh, based on this algorithm, right? This Barabashi Albert algorithm. Um, it didn't do anything if you note, like we're just, all we're doing is storing it in this variable G, and then we can do a lot of things with this graph object. Um, you know, one of the most common is just to visualize it, right? Um, and so this uh, draw, or there's a, a bunch of different um, options. This is spring embedded, um, plots the network. And so you can see that it is centralized. You know, these nodes in the middle have lots of connections and the ones on the outside have few. So that's the, the main idea. That's kind of the point of that random graph. Um, but then there's other things that we can get with G or, or from this graph object. Um, things like the degree. So this is the number of neighbors that each node has. This will make a histogram of it. So for each, this says for each you know value in this degree uh, object, Give us, get the value and then plot a histogram. So this is the, the histogram of how many neighbors everyone has. It's, it's highly skewed. Most people have very few, right? Two or three neighbors. Uh, well, one node has over 25. So uh, that's the kind of the basic syntax. And th again, these are just examples. There are literally dozens of these types of measures. So this is an example of one called between the centrality, which is similar. Uh, so centrality in network science uh, sort of refers to, tries to capture the idea of power or influence in a network. And between the centrality uh, is one measure, you know, and, and, and this just shows like a, this kind of typical 
uh, syntax, the syntax is typical, right? And so there's a bunch, if we look at index.centrality in Jupyter, it's really nice because we can just tab complete and it'll tell us all of these, right? So there's one, I don't even know what approximate current flow is, but we can look at what that is, right? So that's the, or approximate probably current flow between a centrality. That's uh, another version, right, of, of a centrality measure. If we want to look at closeness centrality, we can do that, you know, and, and so we can measure each of these um, really easily, you know, just by changing the syntax just a little bit. And and uh, and Network X, you know, helps us to calculate all of these. Um, it also has a bunch of network level measures. So the diameter, for example, is the farthest distance you know, the farthest number of hops from one node to another. Um, average clustering is um, the um, number of, like, you can think of it as sort of if A is connected to B and B is connected to C, how often is A also connected to C? That's sort of the main idea. And there are a number of, you know, triadic closure is another version of a very similar type of measure, sort of looking at how much people are grouped in, in small groups where everyone knows everyone versus being more random. This is, um, yeah, quite low um, <coughs> for like a real social network. Uh, so that's the that's kind of the idea, right? Is that there's all, once you have this G, this graph object, there's lots of different things you can figure out about it. You can use that to compare to other networks or to try to gain insight about, about this network and how it's working. Um, the other, um, thing I wanted to show really quickly is what you would do if you had data from another source. You know, that's that's what's much more typical, right? Um, as social scientists, we don't care typically too much about these sort of random, randomly generated graphs and what the properties of them are. Um, but it's more about, you know, graphs of actual people or actual interactions. And so um, what you need to do is create an edge list, it's called in order to, to create a, a graph object. And so I give, well, ironically, a random version of this. Um, so we have a, a list of nodes and then uh, randomly, there's a, a from column and a to column. So if we look at the data frame, it looks like this. So there's an edge, we call it an edge list because there's an edge between five and seven and 49 and 10 and 20 and 58, et cetera. Um, and then, we just call uh, network x from pandas edge list. We give it the name of the data frame and then the source column, the name of the source column and the name of the target column. And it'll create a, a nice graph object for us. And again, we'll do the, the same thing, draw it again. Um, you can ignore that deprecation warning. I, hopefully the, the folks at network x will fix that before it's actually deprecated, uh, but it's, it's not our fault because that's the short of the long, the long of it. Uh, so the uh, so this is our, our random graph, and you know you can do similar types of things, right? So if we plot the histogram of this, it's much less skewed than when we saw the the Barbashi Albert one. Um, and and so yeah, so that's kind of the the main idea of um, network analysis and of network X.